This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. In a single day in 79 AD, the entire city of Pompeii was buried by a massive volcanic eruption. Ash and lava covered many secrets of life in those times. Secrets which would remain hidden for 1,500 years. One recent discovery there has challenged history. Could this be the earliest Christian cross entombed in the very heart of Roman decadence? No ancient civilization could match the grandeur of Rome. Even her outlying towns bear witness to the wealth of the empire. Most of her monuments have eroded, but the city of Pompeii is the one place where the past of Rome was sealed in the earth and not lost. Wall paintings give us a glimpse of life in Pompeii. The city as a whole gives us a large window, looking into a single day of that era, 1900 years ago. The city was preserved because it was built right next to Mount Vesuvius, a dormant volcano. On a morning in August 79 AD, the volcano began to rumble. On the day Pompeii was buried, great winds of change were sweeping across the old world. A thousand Egyptian dynasties had collapsed. Rome had crushed Israel and conquered Europe. Followers of the new religion Christianity were worshiping in secret from England to Jerusalem. In distance and in spirit, no city could be much farther from the Holy Land than Pompeii. It seems impossible that in only 25 years, Christians had begun to convert the people of this city, people who thought Mount Vesuvius was a god. Edward Bendel, professor at the American University in Rome and an expert on Pompeii, believes the ancient Pompeians were fooled by the deceptive quiet of Vesuvius. Here in this moonlight crater of a dormant volcano, there is a strange silence, broken occasionally by the sound of falling rock. 2,000 years ago, it was perhaps as quiet, for men had lived on its slopes for centuries. They worked the rich volcanic soil, producing rich farms and fine vineyards, making some of the best wine known to the world at that time. With a natural harbor nearby and a mild climate, Pompeii prospered. The volcano would rumble, but the citizens ignored the danger. Vesuvius had never erupted, they believed, and no one suspected it ever would. They had no idea they were living on a time bomb. The events of 62 AD might have given a warning. But no one associated the violence of the sudden earthquake with a nearby barren crater. Were the gods cursing Pompeii? Should the city be abandoned? Scientists and priests came all the way from Rome to resolve the question. Science, however, was not highly developed then. They consulted astrological charts searched for obscure references in the writings of ancient philosophers. 
and for this life or death matter, called in a consultant to double check their results. He was a highly respected professor of augury, who could predict the future by reading the entrails of birds. What seems like primitive superstition was, at that time, the most reliable method of research. The augurer carefully measured the liver or the gallbladder, comparing the size and shape to classic norms. He concluded Pompeii was safe. All the experts agreed. Remarkably, no one noticed the volcano had begun smoking. Deep within the earth, however, pressures were mounting. Pompeii was given one last warning. In the middle of August 79 AD, the wells went dry. Underground water had shifted, generating tons of pressure deep inside Vesuvius. Then came August 24th. black cloud of volcanic cinders and ash shot miles into the air. as it seems, many of the people did not flee. None of them had the slightest idea what a volcanic eruption was. complacent citizens, it was too late to escape. Sulfur fumes killed many on the spot. When the eruption ceased, three days later, Pompeii was 30 feet under volcanic ash and rock. The Roman Empire fell. The Middle Ages passed, Columbus discovered America. All that historians knew about Pompeii came from fragments of old Roman records. It was remembered only as a typical pleasure-loving resort. When the lost city was found and excavated, however, surprising evidence for the first Christian cross was discovered, sealed deep in the earth. Pompeii's place in history is quite unique in that in one day it was completely hermetically sealed. In other words, time stood still. In 1710, in the shadow of Vesuvius, the lost city of Pompeii was miraculously discovered. A peasant named Giovanni Nocerino set out to dig a new well for his farm. The village dowser had directed him to a promising spot. 30 feet down, he still hadn't hit water and was about to give up. As long as anyone could remember, local legends told of a fabulous city buried far underground, teeming with gold and jewels. 
No one could remember the exact name or location of the city, but they believed it had been part of the ancient Roman Empire. Giovanni sold the marble to a dealer who realized it was both very old and valuable. The two men returned and continued digging in secret. They found treasure beyond their dreams, not only statues and coins, but an entire city that extended for miles. The strange soil was so soft they could dig with bare hands, yet firm enough to tunnel in all directions. They realized the old legends of a lost city were true. After 50 years of treasure hunting, diggers made a chance discovery. From that day in 1760 to the present, excavations in Pompeii have continued. Early explorers carted away whatever they found. Only in the last century have scientists been able to put a stop to the stealing and damage of historic artifacts. This control led to the most dramatic find of all. In 1864, the archaeologist Giuseppe Fiorelli was supervising the excavation when workers found yet another cavity in the volcanic ash. Like hundreds of others, the cavity was filled with human bones. They usually just tossed the bones aside and kept on digging. A senseless loss. Fiorelli thought, when the Pompeians died, volcanic ash hardened around their bodies. The bodies decayed, leaving a hollow space in the rock. Could this hollow space be used like a sculptor's mold? tried an experiment. Plaster of Paris was poured in the hollow. Then, very carefully, they scraped away the surrounding ash and cinders. The resulting cast was more detailed than he had dared to hope. It resembled a marble statue, but this was once the shape of a living person. A mule driver huddled under a balcony. A young woman trapped in the street. A dog left behind chained to a post. And many others literally frozen in time. Quintius the baker gave a party for his brother Neo, who was just elected magistrate. Their friends came and drank all night. In the wine shop of Felix Arbitrus, a new blend was said to capture the very taste of spring. 
Decius bought a slave who knew the art of mosaics. His first creation said, beware of the dog. The slaves of Mrs. Vetti were hard at work on her new house. It would be the very finest in Pompeii. This is the atrium of a typical Roman house of a wealthy family, naturally. We have the atrium with its compluvium, which leads down to the impluvium, where the rain fell in the rainy season, filling a basin of water below. The family life revolved around this area. You will find that you have small rooms, the cubicles, the triclinium or dining room, which we find back there. In the morning, uh, mother would have got up and the servants would have gone into her cubicle and done her hair. Father would have got up out of his because it was recommended by the Romans not to sleep together. It led to bad marriages. Um, and you will notice the painting on the walls. This is one of the finest houses as far as the late or fourth style, Pompeian style in painting can be found. But life was comfortable, calm in these houses, the open air in the garden behind, the open air in the atrium. For all of Pompeii's value as a treasure chest of antiquity, the city is, ironically, better known for its many lewd murals. Advertisements of a sort for the red light district were plastered on walls all over town. What has survived in Pompeii are records of frivolity, decadence, and still another facet of Roman civilization, savagery. In here you had the sport which included men against animals, animals against animals, and men against men. The Romans loved blood sport. If they ran out of gladiators, they would then go to the local jail, get a condemned prisoner or a group of condemned prisoners, and it was like that, slitting the throat, so to speak. At one point, the competition between the two gladiator shows was so strong that the populace in the arena joined into the fight and there was a gross bloodbath. For this reason, the government in Rome closed this amphitheater for 10 years. Discovery of strange murals brought up another mystery in Pompeii. The scenes seem to depict religious rituals, but to this day, no one has been able to explain their meaning. want of a better name, scholars call these rites the cult of the mysteries. No culture in history has been without religion. The Romans borrowed from the Greeks and created a panoply of gods. Evidence has been found in Pompeii showing tributes and sacrifices paid to Jupiter, Juno, Mars, and dozens of other pagan gods. When Vesuvius erupted, Christianity was less than 50 years old, and we would never expect to find evidence of its organized practice so far from the Holy Land. However, in nearby Herculaneum, sister city of Pompeii, a small object was found over a simple altar. It looked like a Christian cross. This room was sealed in the earth only 49 years after Christ. Is it possible that whoever worshiped here knew Jesus? Well, some say that it is a cross and that it was a room of a Christian. I have my doubts because although the cross was an early uh, Christian symbol, the most common symbol in that period, before 79, was the fish. If there were a fish there, I would be convinced. Dr. John Ray is a professor of theology in Anaheim, California. 
Well, this depression in the stucco wall definitely has the shape of a cross. It looks like it, and it looks like a wooden cross had been nailed into this depression at one time and then removed, and then a board or wooden cover nailed over the area. And it's thought that this may have happened perhaps during a time of Christian persecution, such as when Nero persecuted the Christians in 64 AD. As far as I know, no other religion used the cross at that time as a symbol. And so it would be pretty good evidence that it was of a Christian person worshiping. The controversy is still unresolved. The Bible tells us that St. Paul traveled from the Holy Land to the Bay of Naples around 63 AD. He met Christian brethren at a place called Three Taverns. Was this place Pompeii or possibly Herculaneum? The answer may still lie buried in the unexcavated part of this town. Coming up next, In Search Of continues with a probe into time travel. Then 20th Century with Mike Wallace reports on the scrutiny of the police in the wake of the Rodney King and Amadou Diallo incidents. And later tonight, The Men Who Killed Kennedy takes a close look at the evidence that Lee Harvey Oswald may not have acted alone at 9 here on the History Channel where the past comes alive.